Hello everyone, uh, I had a lot of requests uh, for game number 4 from the Blitz section of the match uh, Magnus Carlsen vs Ding Liren, so uh, I decided to show it, it's a very nice game. Uh, mostly it shows how uh, probably Ding Liren respected Carlsen too much in this match and that's why the result was so much in Carlsen's favor. Uh, I will put a link in the description below to an article from chess.com, you can find a lot of imp information about this match uh, in particular. Uh, they say that uh, Magnus Carlsen won the match with 67 to 25, uh, which sounds a bit weird, uh, but in a simpler term, uh, out of the 30 games they played, Carlsen uh, won 16 games, uh, Ding Liren won 2 games and uh, 12 games were drawn. So Carlsen actually won more games than they drew, which is a very, very weird for a chess match. I don't remember the last time this happened in modern chess. This is uh, definitely quite the result. And I do have to apologize for uh, calling uh, Ding Lear and Wei Yi in my previous video. It's uh, not, not something I do on purpose. Uh, like five days ago I called Neidorf Bronstein because I was doing a Neidorf game from a Bronstein book. So, you know, mind works in mysterious ways. It's an, uh, it, it happens. Uh, I actually think Ding Liren is a great guy, if you remember. I don't I don't know if it's from a video or a stream I had. I played a game against Ding Liren uh, on Chess Arena. Uh, I had the white pieces, I played the King's Gambit, and Ding Liren resigned around the 10th move uh, just to show me how I was playing it wrong. So we played another game, now he had the white pieces, I repeated all the moves from, from the previous game, and then he showed me how to play it, and it, it was quite an amazing line, so... Uh, just wanted you to know it ha doesn't have anything to do with Ding Liren himself. It's uh, I just I just blunder a word uh, while making a video. So okay, that being said, uh, let's see this game. Uh, Liren has the white pieces and he plays knight to f3, knight to f6, c4, uh, c5. The English opening symmetrical variation, knight to c3, e6, g3, uh, b6. Now bishop to g2, uh, bishop to b7. Uh, Liren castles, a6, uh, rook to e1, d6, e4, uh, bishop to e7, uh, d4, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and queen to c7. Developing the queen and also eyeing that c4 pawn. Uh, but uh, bishop to e3 now. And uh, Carlsen doesn't capture the pawn, he plays knight b to d7. Uh, you really can't capture this pawn. If you play queen captures on c5, uh, sorry, it seems uh, my browser refreshed itself and uh, and I believe the board moved so I'm just gonna realign it sorry about that the first time this happened uh, if you capture with queen captures on c4 you get rook to c1 and you can't uh, go back with the queen if you play queen c7 you get knight d5 and uh, whatever you play queen d7 this picks up the rook comes with check you lose the rook on a8 and even if you don't go back, if you play something like queen to b4, uh, white will simply have uh, too much options to harass your queen. For example, a3, uh, queen captures, knight a4, again with an attack on the queen, you capture a pawn, you get knight b6, uh, again threatening to capture the rook, and if you try to defend it with rook a7, uh, this doesn't work uh, well in your favor. Uh, knight to c8, again with the attack on the rook, uh, if you capture it, rook captures on c8 is coming, so... You could try to protect it with rook back to a8, but now you get e5, uh, opening up the attack on the knight, on the bishop on b7, and if you play something like bishop captures, you get knight captures on d6 with check. Uh, bishop captures and rook to c8, uh, now you're losing the other rook. A king to d7, rook captures on h8, and your knight is still under attack, your bishop is ready to be grabbed on g2, uh, this is just just a terrible game uh, if you capture that pawn. So after bishop to e3, knight b to d7 by Carlsen, uh, rook to c1, rook to c8, uh, f4 now, queen to b8, uh, and now g4, uh, preparing g5. Carlsen plays h5 and uh, g5. Of course you don't want to capture, you do want to get that knight away from f6. So knight to g4, and we have g6 now. Uh, you can't really capture it. If you capture with g6, then knight captures on e6, and this is a beautiful position for white. Uh, you can't really kick the knight away from there. Uh, simply f5, and uh, it's uh, going to be a, a very hard game for black. So after g6, uh, Carlsen grabs the pawn. He's not really afraid of anything there. Rook captures on c4. Uh, g captures on f7 with check, king captures, and bishop to f1 with a tempo on the rook. 
Uh, Carlson grabs the bishop with a tempo on the queen. Uh, rook captures knight on e3. And here again Carlson sacrifices the exchange. Rook captures on d4. Queen captures on d4 and b5. Uh, making room for the knight uh, on b6 and uh, may maybe even for something else as you'll see in the game. Uh, rook to g3. Uh, this g7, g7 pawn is really weak and uh, Ding Luren is preparing queen captures on g7. It's gonna be gonna be quite a move. Uh, so bishop to f6, uh, stopping this threat and attacking the queen. And with a move like, uh, as this is the critical position in the game, with a move like queen to e3, uh, Lurian would still be able to enjoy his uh, better position and uh, and uh, probably at least draw a game if if not win it. Uh, but uh, after this uh, after this bishop to f6 move. Uh, he played e5, and it definitely seems like like this is a great move. Uh, if the bishop moves, you capture again. You're breaking through, threatening on g7. Uh, if you play something like uh, bishop to h4, you can even simply capture on d6 and give the exchange back. Uh, bishop captures h captures, and this is a this is a very nice position for white. Uh, if you go something like bishop to e7, uh, you can play knight to e4. Uh, and after something like captures, you capture the knight on d7, bishop captures on e4. Uh, capturing on g7 with the rook isn't uh, a good plan because you will not have enough resources uh, to end the game in your favor as white. So you do have to play bishop to g2, stop this strong bishop. Uh, queen to b6, simply king h1, bishop captures, rook captures, and uh, now you're definitely threatening a lot of things. So. Uh, the queens should be exchanged, but after that happens in rook c6, uh, you're, now Ding Luren is up the exchange, and this is a winning endgame for white. Uh, but unfortunately, after the e5 move, Carlsen finds the absolute best move, and it took him 13 seconds to do so. Uh, he plays the bishop to d8, and now uh, you see the real problem of e5. Uh, when Ding Luren pushed e5, he unleashed the power of this bishop on b7. And when this bishop uh, comes to b6, this will be a, mo a very mighty bishop pair. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, Ding Liren misses this move and he plays knight to e4, uh, which allowed bishop to b6, and in this position uh, Ding Liren resigned the game. As there is nothing you can really do here, uh, even without playing knight to e4, uh, if you play anything, you do have to stop it somehow. Uh, this is coming with check and you will have to put something in between so probably rook to e3 to, to block the bishop with the rook or maybe queen to f2 uh, and then after bishop b6 play a rook e3 but it doesn't matter this is uh, all better uh, be better for carlson so after knight e4 he played bishop to b6 and here ding Liren resigned uh, you can't really do anything here if you block with the knight you just lose the knight so again uh, queen to f2, you can either push h4 to go for some rook h6 and uh, rook g6 ideas as this bishop is still slicing all the way to h1, or you can win material immediately with knight back to d7, now Ding Liren would have to give up the rook as well, uh, you're, you're up a piece and you're winning the game. And uh, the problem with after bishop to b6, if you play rook uh, to c5 blocking this, then you're just giving up a rook, you didn't really achieve anything. Okay, now we do have this uh, knight to f2 move to to block any discoveries, but d captures, f captures, and rook d8, and uh, again you're down a piece, and you don't really have anything here. Uh, capturing on g7 uh, is impossible. Uh, no, I, I don't mean impossible. Uh, making a threat to capture on g7 or any threats is not possible for white here. Black defends successfully against all of it. So yeah, after bishop to b6, Dingler resigned the game, and... Uh, uh, this was quite quite an amazing win uh, for Carlson. Not just not this game, but the entire match. Uh, I, I don't think uh, anyone ever won a, a match in the Champions Showdown with s such a huge margin. Uh, but I don't think it will be a negative experience for Ding Liren, as uh, he did play the World Champion. This is the first time uh, he played a match against him, and I don't think uh, uh, losing will have a neg negative effect on him. Uh, because you know he did qualify for the candidates, and uh, it would be it would be quite bad if he thought, oh man, what if I even win the candidates? How am I going to play a match against Magnus Carlsen? So after he analyzes his games and uh, he sees that uh, he had a, a perfectly fine position in 
in most of the games, I think uh, uh, the next match they play, that uh, the result will be quite different. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoy it. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, and be sure to check out the article uh, I put in the description below from chess.com. Thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon.